All right, we're back. We are on page 16 of math analysis, and we are talking about uh, reciprocal functions now. So reciprocals, not the same as inverses, right? So uh, if, you do, uh, if you do a trig function of an angle, I'm probably writing this on my face. Trig function, uh, we'll move it down. Trig function of an angle, look at that G, not great, not great. The trig function of an angle gives you a ratio. Okay, so a trig function means sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. Those are the six trig functions. You do the trig function of an angle, it gives you a ratio. You do the inverse trig of a ratio, it will give you an angle. So the inverse functions are inverse sine, inverse code. You literally say the word inverse in front of them. So don't confuse reciprocals, which take angles and give you ratios, and they're just the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. Reciprocals, don't confuse those with inverses. It's like a common thing to do initially, uh, but then once you get it, you'll realize how like silly that kind of mistake would be. Um, so let's see what this problem says. So if each of these on your calculator, don't write intermediate steps. All right, we're gonna obviously write down intermediate steps because we need to be able to look back on this and see how we did it. But, um, so like there's, there's nothing interesting about the first three. So I'm gonna write my intermediate steps in blue. So I'm just gonna do the, uh, I'm gonna say that the theta, theta, listen to me. Theta is the inverse secant of 2.15. And then whatever the calculator says. Here, T is gonna be the inverse cotangent of 2.6. Cosecant, uh, so alpha is gonna be the inverse cosecant of 2.15. Okay, so I'm also, when I'm on the calculator, I'm gonna do these a little differently and see if what I think is happening is happening. So let's see. Um, let's go to the calculator and get these three done. All right. So I'm going to start a new doc, a uh, new, new problem doc for option one, just cleans it out. Right. But you get to keep everything that you already have. It's all over here. You can click. Um, so now I'm in problem one. Now I'm in problem two, page one of problem two. If I do a uh, doc for, let's insert another calculator page. Now I'm in page two of, of problem two, all within the same document. All right. So let's see, I want to do, I'm in degrees. You guys want to check that. It's not really obvious that you should be in degrees for this one, but like we've been in degrees, so let's just leave it. I'm gonna do the inverse secant. So here's a weird thing. I can type arc secant, A-R-C-S-E-C, -E arc secant. What does that mean? We don't, we don't really know yet, but watch what happens when I press enter. It changes it into inverse secant. So it's another weird way of writing inverse secant is to say arc secant. In fact, arc sine changes into inverse sine, arc cosine changes into inverse cosine, all of them. Um, so this is a fast, if you're typing, that's a fast way to do it. All right, so if I think about this problem, I'm saying that the secant of theta or whatever, secant of theta, uh, let, me, let me just jot this down. This is 62.282, 62.282, and then we'll say degrees. Because you do the inverse of a ratio, you get an angle. So 62.282 degrees. Uh, what if I do the inverse cosine of 1 over 2.15? I think this is going to be the same. And it is. Why is it the same? So in the original problem, let me flip back. In the original problem, we had a secant of theta equals 2.15. But think about what you know. You know that secant, so if you have secant of theta is 2.15. Secant is one over cosine, so one over cosine of theta is 2.15, which means that the cosine of theta is one over 2.15. Now I've done these types of problems just a million times, so I see secant of theta equals 2.15, I kind of immediately think, well, I could just work with cosine and say cosine is one over 2.15. I don't have to simplify one over 2.15, um, but it's, it's easier to think about in terms of cosine. So sometimes you'll find yourself kind of doing that. Either way, you're gonna get 62.282 degrees. 
Um, so let's go back to the calculator and do the others and see what we get. So here I want to do the inverse cotangent of 2.6. Okay, 21.038. So approximately, ew, wrong color. You didn't even see it, but still, ew. Um, 21.038, 21.038 degrees. Okay, what else could we do? Well, if cotan is 2.6, then tangent is one over 2.6. So I think I can do the inverse tangent of one over 2.6, and I get the same thing. So you're gonna get the same thing when you do these. Uh, cosecant, so I wanna do the inverse cosecant, or the arc cosecant of 2.15. Okay, so cosecant is one over sine. So that means sine of alpha would be 1 over 2.15. So if I did the arc sine or the inverse sine of 1 over 2.15, same result. 27.718. 27.718. Whoa. Okay. Degrees. All right, let's go back and take a look at what the next problem says. So the next problem is a little more complicated. Not a lot more complicated, but a little more complicated. All right, secant of y is equal to 4, but I want to find the tangent of y. So the secant is 4. I want the tangent. Well, what is y equal? Think about the problems that we did here, right? Secant of theta is 2.15. Theta is the inverse secant of 2.15. So here I have secant of y is equal to 4. So that means that y is equal to the inverse secant of 4. And then I'm trying to find the tangent of that, so I want the, well, okay. How should I best do this? Let's do this. So this, I could say that, that y is equal to the secant inverse of four, or the cosine inverse, the inverse cosine of one fourth, same difference. Uh, so this, let's try, to, let's try to highlight intelligently here. So y is equal to this, and I want the tangent of y. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the tangent of the inverse secant of 4. So this is the work that I'm not showing. But we're supposed to find the tangent of y. And actually, we're going to be a little surprised by this. So uh, let, me, let me go to the calculator. Well, will we be? I don't know. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm silly. I was trying, it's like I went to the calculator and I was trying to share the iPad at the same time. Like that was weird. All right, let's see. Um, I want to do the tangent of the arc, se arc secant of four. Okay, this is without showing intermediate steps. Root 15, that's exact. What? Why is that? Now, when you are learning trig and you get an answer like this, you should immediately think, can I do that by hand? Like. Root 15 is a pretty nice answer. Maybe I could have solved this without a calculator. We're going to go back and try to do that. Um, and the answer is yes, you can do this without a calculator. So what if we had shown intermediate sets, right? So we find uh, the inverse secant of 4, and we get that, which, which we knew it would be, right? Because um, if the secant of something equals 4, then the cosine of the same thing equals 1 over 4, because they are reciprocals of each other. So it makes sense that we would have flipped over the ratio. Um, and then we would have done the tangent of that answer. We still get the same thing. So that makes sense. Let's see if we can do it by hand because that's a big, this is a big deal. So this, uh, so I think I apologize to uh, Mr. Rosen who taught me uh, all the high school math that I learned. Uh, I think that this is what he referred to as the old triangle trick. But I can't 100% swear to that. But something was called that, and I loved saying it. Uh, and now maybe I've forgotten it, and that's unfortunate. I didn't forget that it's a thing, though. Um, all right, let's see. Secant of y equals 4. So if the secant of y is equal to 4, let's start with that. So secant of y equals 4. I prefer to work with cosine, so I'm just going to change it and say that that means that the cosine of y equals one fourth, right? I took the reciprocal of both sides. One over secant is cosine. One over four is one over four. Um, so I did that. Now, this means that somewhere in the universe, 
of all possible triangles, there is one triangle. Well, there might be more than one triangle, but there's certainly a triangle that has an angle y, and the cosine of that angle is one over four, which means adjacent is one, and hypotenuse is four. So if that's the case, the missing side will be one, the square root of four squared minus one squared, the square root of 15. And now look at, oop, crashed. Hold on, gotta go back. I don't know what makes that happen. That's like a weird crash. Uh, that's the square root of 15. Now if I go back and look at what I'm being asked to find, I'm being asked to find uh, the tangent of y. The tangent of y, well, here's y. And tangent should be opposite over adjacent, which would be root 15. We could do that by hand. Could we do the next one by hand? Uh, I think we sort of can. The thing I think we can't do or don't want to do is deal with like squaring 6.24. I, no, I have no desire to do that, but uh, let's see if we can do it. So it starts off cotan of beta is 6.24. So let's say cotan of beta is 6.24. I personally would prefer to work with tangent. So I'm going to say that that means the tangent of beta is one over 6.24. Not a problem. We'll draw a triangle. I'm going to not, I'm not going to waste time waiting for these lines to pop up. Uh, all right. So we need an angle beta and for beta, the tangent is one over 6.24. The opposite is one and the adjacent is 6.24, or at least the ratio, right? It could be two and then 12.48. We don't really know. So we'll just use the ratio we're given. So what does that mean? We're looking for secant. So secant is one over cosine. To find cosine, I need to know the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse, I am not gonna find, but I am gonna say that it's one plus 6.24 squared. So I believe that this answer I believe the secant of beta that we're looking for is going to be, so cosine is 6.24 over that hypotenuse. So secant is that hypotenuse, radical one plus 6.24 squared over adjacent 6.24. I think whatever we get is gonna be equivalent to that. And I'm gonna check it. Um, also, I think if we did it the way we're supposed to do it, uh, we would be doing the secant of the inverse cotan of 6.24, ah, 6.24. Okay, so this, this is definitely gonna be a decimal. All right, let's check it. This is like a moment of truth, or is it? I'm like feeling, I'm feeling very confident about this answer. So it's kind of a moment of truth, but it's a moment of truth where I expect to prevail. All right, secant of arc cotangent of 6.24. Okay, fine. What else could I have done? I could have done the secant of the arc tangent of one over 6.24. Okay, what else could I have done? I could have done one over the cosine of the uh, arc cotangent of 6.24. Pretty sure that's right. Could have done uh, one over the cosine of the arc tangent of one over 6.24. Play with them. You have to play around with these and get good at them. Like these, none of these are a stretch. I just kept like flipping the ratio and then changing the function, flip the ratio, change the function, flip, you know, you just keep going through it. So I also think, so this is 1.013. Uh, 1.013. Now let's see if that weird radical thing we had is equivalent. So we had the square root of one plus 6.24 squared over 6.24, boom, same. And this is exact, that's the exact value. Um, this is a decimal, which I assume goes on forever. Um, we can only see so many decimal places, um, but we actually found the exact value, which is pretty cool. So sometimes we can find exact, sometimes we don't find exact, uh, but you really gotta play around with it. Like uh, the calculator is this amazing tool that will confirm or refute things that you think. So if you think you are right, put it in, see if you are. If you uh, think it might be wrong, try it anyway and see. So let's go back here. So these are the things that we got on uh, for this work so far. 
And uh, I'm going to come back in the next video and probably finish this page. So I will see you there.